All right, welcome to the CESS meeting. Today is March 23. We have two topics today, uh, which both pertain to what happens when errors are, well, when anything is thrown out of either a shadow realm or a callable boundary. Carity. Okay, so the, fir the first one is about whether or not uh, the um, event target, custom event, error events, and so on, should be global values that are provided by the host when a shadow realm is created. Um, and uh, issue number 7591 um, seems that... Yeah, could you give us more background about what those things are? I uh, haven't paid attention to the browser side of things in a long time. Okay, so th this one is specifically, I think they, they, the, the, the simple case is event target. Whether or not event target should be a global value on a shadow realm. Event target is used in Node and browsers to uh, implement um, a, a regular eventing mechanism that, that you could use to listen and dispatch events on certain objects. Uh, in the browser, the window is an event target. In Shadow Realm, the, the global object is a ordinary object. So it's not an event target. Therefore, you cannot listen for events there. You cannot dispatch events there. Um, and it seems that we are all in agreement that that should be the behavior. Um, so it's not special in any case. Um, in, in Node, I believe it's the same thing. Um, the, the question is whether or not we should even provide event target as a global value that people can use to create subclassing or create instances of it and so on. And, and it seems that uh, consider that it is in Node and in browsers, it makes sense to have event target. Uh, it's not in JavaScript. It's not in JavaScript. Yes, these are the things that the host will be able to add to the global object. So what is the current, so, uh, um, so what else uh, in the, according to the Shadow Realm spec, might the host add to the global object? Can you, can you repeat that question? The, what, according to the Shadow Realm spec, what freedoms does the host have Anything. to add? I'm sorry? Anything as long as it's uh, configurable. Yeah. So, so, so then this would already be allowed by the Shadow Realm spec? Yes. So I don't understand what the issue is. So the, then the, the secondary question of that, or the, the, I think the, the tell aspect of it is uh, whether or not we want to expose, promise, reject, rejection event. So is, so it wouldn't go to the, <laughs> let, let me try to see if I understand. In, um, in, in the ECMA spec, uh, there is, hooks so that the host can report um, rejected promises and the global error handler is also a host integration. Um, what the HTML integration does is take uh, unhandled errors or unhandled promise rejections uh, and dispatch an event on the global because the global in HTML is a uh, event uh, target, so it can dispatch events. Is, did I did I summarize that right? I think so. Yes. Yeah, I think I, I think I just realized what I'm confused about. Let me let me uh, uh, clear, um, confirm. Uh, we're not. None of this would affect the Shadow Realm spec. We're not talking about what should or should not be in the Shadow Realm spec. We're talking about what should be in the HTML integration. Is that correct? I, I, I believe so. So it's not really about the spec, it's about to add to the other spec that defines what goes into shadow realm instances, I'm a global object. All right. So currently, the existing promise rejection mechanism, the hooks that exist in uh, 
the ECMAS spec, and obviously the global error handlers, all those, um, it doesn't matter which realm that happens in, uh, those hooks would keep fun, uh, working and uh, the host would already be able to identify which realm uh, that occurred in, right? Actually, I'm, I'm a little bit unclear on how the promise rejection uh, hooks work uh, and how that interacts with the realms. Yeah, so let me, let, so let, maybe, maybe reshaping the conversation. So the issue is really about the behavior of the global object uh, or, or driven by the behavior of the global object. Because in the shadow realm, the global object is a, um, it's not a special in any case, it's just a ordinary object. Uh, it's not an event target. Therefore, um, we cannot have a mechanism implemented in the host that will dispatch certain events into that global object. Uh, let's say that there is an error in one of the promises or some sort of error there that surface as a global object in a regular web application. Uh, so you can listen for those errors at the window level. Uh, in a shadow realm, they, they will not work because the global is not an event target and doesn't dispatch any of these. Uh, but the question is really about if that, since that's the case, I plan to change that. That's the case. It is a ordinary object. Then, what is the point of exposing a bunch of these globals into the shadow realm when you will not be able to use them directly with the global object that the shadow realms create? But the, so the HTML spec could create uh, an entry on the global that's called like error handler or something like that, that is an event target that is installed in uh, on the Shadow Realm uh, global and which is the target used uh, as uh, to dispatch those events instead of being the global object directly. Uh, nothing prevents HTML yeah. from changing and doing that. So I think that's, that's Dominic's position. Dominic is saying, well, yes, the global object is not an event target. It doesn't dispatch this event. It doesn't do any of that. But still, user land code might create these structures, and even the host might create different objects that behave that way. So um, it's just a, a discussion of whether or not it makes sense to expose these global values into the shadow realm, even though the shadow realm global object will not use it, or the shadow realm itself will not use it in any ways. It's just giving them this these artifacts to developers so they can use the same mechanism that they use in different environments. I mean, is, is that the case that uh, the Shadow Realms wouldn't use it? If, if HTML created uh, a secondary uh, object that can be used to register those heaven handlers uh, in the context of a Shadow Realm, uh, would errors unhandled errors and unhandled uh, rejections that happen in execution inside that uh, shadow realm, should they trigger that event? And I, I think it's yeah, possible. That's the host. That's the host. That's not, that's not 262 doing any of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so first of all, I, um, this is the first time that I, that, I, that I hear about that particular proposal. And it does make sense to me. And it's probably something that we can explore and then even bring it to the web, like the object that you can also use on the web in the same fashion to do the same things because uh, the, the global one itself is confusing for some people. But, um, but that doesn't change the fact that we don't need to do anything on the, on the shadow realm spec to introduce this new global value in, this, in the 262 spec. So I think that that might be host specific uh, behavior. I think the main thing that's important is that a uh, an error uh, handler on the I don't know how you want to call it incubator realm uh, is not able to get error objects from inside shadow realms because that would break the boundary. Um, so that that's one of those cases where the host integration needs to make sure it respects uh, the shadow realm boundary. Um, and, and that's why I was trying to get at the next step is that if you can get 
unhandled rejections and unhandled uh, errors that happen inside the shadow realm, developers will expect to get that information somewhere else. And the somewhere else, it would make sense for that to happen inside the shadow realm itself. Yeah, I think that, that resonates well um, for me as well. Um, so again, the, the primary question is whether or not we have any objections to um, host adding those global values in Jubilee um, in the realm global object, uh, even though the global object itself will not will never use. And and just to make sure I understood uh, Matthew's point just now, none of this implies any breaching of the shadow realm boundary. No, no, that's exactly why I want to make sure we don't breach it, uh, and that hosts are not allowed to. But since I have a feeling they're going to get the feature request to get error informations like that, they're going to need to figure out where to expose this. Uh, it, that doesn't violate the the callable boundary. Okay. So from the point of view of the TC39 Shadow Realm spec, um, uh, this is all completely neutral, correct? All right, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm fine with the host at, uh, keeping even targets, make, uh, machinery inside Shadow Realms. And I think they will need it uh, ultimately uh, to expose unhandled errors and rejections uh, inside Shadow Realms. Good, good, good. So the second one, uh, issue number... Three, five, three, that one? Yeah. Um, so I guess that issue is what happens when code executing inside the shadow realm. Um, well, if you get a wrapped function uh, and the uh, inside function that it's wrapping when you call it throws, um, what should the error shape be um so you're going to get it a thrown uh something uh, back through the callable binary like the the wrapper is going to rethrow something the question question is what is that rethrown thing should be um so, and i yeah. guess there are, uh yeah Go ahead, i'd Mark. like to ask i'd like to ask some clarifying questions mm -hmm. um uh, so if you pass let's say a number through the callable boundary a number being a primitive value Mm -hmm. goes through the callable boundary. Mm -hmm. uh, if you return a number through the callable boundary, again, mm -hmm. it just goes through the, the callable boundary. Mm -hmm. uh, if you throw a number mm -hmm. through the callable boundary, uh, what currently happens? I think currently as specified, it just throws a new typer uh, created in the caller realm. I, correct me if I'm wrong, Carrie, right? I think it does it to a string on that one and then creates a, a type of a, a, a error on, on, on the boundary, yeah. Okay, um, so, okay, so good. So I understand that, that answer, I'll come back to it. Uh, now, um, if you, pa if you um, make a call through the callable boundary, passing an error as an argument, then that's just, that, that's just, causes an error and the error that it causes is not has no information about the error that was rejected the error that's rejected is simply rejected because it's not an object that can go through the call boundary it's not different than any other object it's basically a type error invalid argument type of uh, kind of error that uh doesn't even get into the um the target realm Right, and and uh, and then and then if you return an error object through the callable boundary, then the caller gets a a type error that's unrelated to the error, and okay. that's as it should be because throwing the error, I'm sorry, returning the error is not different than returning mm -hmm. an object. Yep. So, I think that throwing an error 
should also not, I mean, throwing an error and throwing an object, if you're throwing an object, the error that you get would not be informative with regard to the object that was thrown. Mm -hmm. So if you throw an error, the error that you get should not be informative with regard to the error that was thrown, because otherwise you're privileging errors compared to objects. Now, the, the, with regard to developer experience, the point I wanna make is that the only decent developer experience any developers any ever going to experience is when the callable boundary is um, in turn surrounded by membrane, by, you know, by the half membrane on both sides to build a membrane. And the membrane will never throw across the callable boundary because the membrane mechanism um, uh, doing a, um, an invocation will protect the invocation with the try catch, communicate through the call of boundary information about the, the catch to be reproduced as a throw on the other side. So, you know, the, um, so membranes already have to um, catch, encode and rethrow errors uh, as well as to translate the, the thrown value, um, just like it would for, you know, a, a returned a return value or, or a thrown object. So um, I think trying to rescue the developer experience for people th uh, programming below the, the membrane level is just kind of hopeless. And if we keep trying to incrementally address it, we're just gonna make a mess. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll to add one more thing to, to the picture, which is, what we discussed last week, I believe, is uh, the um, with respect to proxies and revoke proxies specifically. When you pass a revoke proxy or you return a revoke proxy, you also have the same the same type of error that if you pass an error or something like that, it's just uh, invalid argument or invalid return value. Right. Good. Good. Uh, so the only thing in this whole picture that I think we might decide to question is if a primitive value, if, if something that's passable through the call boundary by a return, um, if one of those is thrown rather than returned, uh, we could decide to propagate the throw um, uh, because that says that we're not trying to censor what kind of flow control happens across the call boundary. We're just trying to censor the values. Um, I, I'm not advocating that. I think, it, I think the current behavior on that is fine, but it strikes me as the only part of all this that's questionable. Yeah, and I'm wondering if throwing symbols might be somewhat useful for membranes. Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Or throwing, actually, or throwing a function that lets you get the errors. That's interesting too. Yeah, the throw has to um, be, you know, um, huh. Okay, I'm, I'm no longer definitively not advocating this. I'm now on the fence. Yeah, I need to do more research on this. So, I mean, basically we all agree that um, trying to specially treat, treat uh, error instances uh, that are thrown is a foot gun. Um, it's something we're not gonna be able to contain. Uh, so we should just consider them uh, like any other objects that you would try to pass with a callable binary and, and throw a generic type error. Um, but the open question is what about uh, values that would normally be handled through the uh, callable boundary? Yes. I, I, I remember, so yeah, I, I remember having some issues a, a while back with the membrane or, or even without trying to do anything in terms of preserving the error on the other side. Um, when using a, a detached iframe and so on, and it was pain, painful 
because the errors can be subclass and what do you do in those cases when you subclass an error and then you throw that error through the member through the, the the callable boundary in some degree or something similar to that and it just doesn't work um so i um but i'm but i'm curious about what happened with the function and the symbol and what happened in those cases hmm. yeah i think they the gist of it is like okay if they they if they want to see the errors to be preserved okay i'm throwing an error and i'm putting a message on it what happened with the stack trace and so on uh, and then what happened if i change my code and now i make a a, a different error just a, by subclassing the original error. And now in the subclass, I'm throwing the, the, the instance of the subclass. What happened? What happened there? Like my code will, will work, will break? Like that's the kind of question that we, I think we, the counter argument that we should use for them. And that, or an error instance that has a getter for the name and uh, messages and things like that. It, it like, it becomes a big mess. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that that's the only thing that provides anything like transparency across the call boundary is a membrane built on top of it. And it works pretty well. Like I can tell you, when we use that, it works pretty well. You're gonna get there with all the details and yada yada. It works fine. The stack is an interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know how to think about the stack. Uh, I don't remember what we did there. Um, uh, JDD did that part, so it's not around today, but uh, I, I believe we cut it out. So you're going to get the stack only from the point on, on the membrane uh, where we throw anywhere. I believe so, but I, I just chat with him more about it. I'm curious if you have a mechanism similar to uh, ours where you capture the stack inside the membrane, on one side of the membrane, and then you capture a stack on the other side, and then there is some privilege uh, console or output or something like that that can stitch things together. Anyway, deviating there. <laughs> All right, so I guess the summary of that uh, issue is no, the implementation shouldn't be allowed to do anything with um, uh, error instances coming from the other side, should not even touch them at all. Um, and it does raise the question of whether we want to allow primitive uh, other callable things through the primitive and functions. I suppose we've exhausted the topics. Or they've exhausted us. <laughs> so adjourning early is also, of course, always welcome. Totally okay with that. With that, I'll stop the recording. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>